What is going on YouTube? This is Acid Roots. So I'm going to review a series of double albums throughout the month of February. And basically the first one that's going to kick that off is Life After Death by the Notorious B.I.G. So basically this project came out in the early spring of 1997. This is a double album. This is a double album. This is particularly seen as one of the greatest double albums of all time, specifically in rap music. So it was a big deal around this time when it came out in 1997. The unfortunate thing about it is just the fact that Biggie died before this album was to come out. He died a couple weeks before this album came out in late March of 1997. He died March 9th. The unfortunate thing about it is, is we never got to see the, there's a ton of unfortunate things about this situation, but one of which is just the fact that we never got to see the promotion of this particular album. So it's kind of, there's a ton of unfortunate things about this particular situation, but something about this particular album is just the fact that unlike Ready to Die, which Biggie was alive for, was able to promote and stuff, but this particular album, we don't really know the singles that Biggie had intended. So there were some ones on here that kind of became executive produced by Puff Daddy between this album and then the No Way, between this album and then Puff Daddy. Daddy's No Way Out album from the summer of 1997. So I'd have to say this album was a big deal. The shiny suit era was in full effect by the time this album came out in 97 between this and the Puff Daddy and May stuff that kind of rocked the world throughout 97, 98 and such. And then the Locks album dropped in early 98. Basically Puff Daddy and Mace dominated rap music between like early 1997 to about mid 1998 by the time DMX came out and some stuff like that. But I'd have to say this album was a big deal. It's really too bad that Big was not able to truly promote this album because this is a classic album. It just was not, I feel like it was wielded in the right amount but this was kind of the concept that it just did not get the scorching type temperature that it would probably had and i think on top of that in 1995 biggie dropped a remix to one more chance which had a different beat than the original one more chance and that was the number one song i think it hit number one it either hit number one or number two something like that but that was a big deal of a song back in 1995 and i'm fairly certain that biggie probably would have dropped some remix songs to some of the songs off this particular album had he lived to be able to do it he was getting ready to be on a song with mariah carey he was probably getting ready to be on some songs with little kim the thing about the little kim albums he didn't really drop a verse on that particular album so he helmed that album but he didn't really drop like a rap verse on there he kind of made like some minor cameos did some hooks and things like that but i think he was supposed to be on like some of the remixes of little kim songs that were going to be released as singles throughout 97 and that was the same thing that was going to happen with this album but we'll never know just because big pass before this could really happen and that's just kind of the concept but i look after it apparently i was looking on wikipedia this album was supposed to come out on halloween one of the release dates for this album was, it was supposed to come out on halloween in 1996 but it got delayed biggie got in a car accident so it got delayed and things like that but i'd have to say really i look after the concept that this album the thing about this particular album is it does a ton of things right i'd have to say biggie on this particular album was in his prime he was getting ready to touch gold i know he probably would have had a number of number ones off this particular project like hypnotize i want to say at least hit number one i don't know if that happened after his death or beforehand but i'd have to say it was a big deal as far as that pitch kind of happened he i i do think that this probably would have been an album that would have really gotten biggie some accolades as far as that kind of happened had he been around for it and i just look after the thing i'm losing my point that i'm trying to say here but the thing i would have to say is kind of this the fact that, you know, most folks, when you look at, I don't know, it just kind of felt like Biggie was larger than life around this particular time. That's kind of the concept about it. It's just, you know, not, there's not a ton of folks who really live to see five-star albums kind of happen just within that pitch. They have a five-star album and the, the commercial success of it doesn't detract from them or derail them. Like Eminem had that situation. Like Eminem was at least able to have a series of five-star albums. Dr. Dre had a couple. Snoop Dogg had at least one. But I kind of look after it. It's just not as common for albums to kind of have that particular finesse. Because this would have been like Biggie's second five-star album. Just because Ready to Die was a five-star album. And then this album was a five-star album. And I would say that Conspiracy was definitely a pretty solid album. That had some good moments on there. Big at least had some good looks on that particular album, the Junior Mafia album. So I just would have to say it would have been interesting. But apparently this album is a part of a trilogy. Now, Puff Daddy said that the third album after this one was going to be called Born Again. I don't know if that was actually, but it makes sense just because this was kind of a series of a trend. Ready to Die was one. Life After Death continued that trend. And then Born Again would have probably been the third one as far as that pitch kind of particularly kind of happened. It's just an interesting kind of thing about it to see what would happen after this particular one. But this is a classic. This is going to get a rave score. It's easy enough to see this whole album. is just chock full of hits. Biggie can easily handle like the double album fair as far as that particularly kind of happens. So that's just kind of the thing about it. We'll go ahead and... Uh, I'll go ahead and talk about the singles. So there were four of them. Basically, there were three of them, but one was kind of a double-layered single, so that's kind of the concept. But we'll go ahead and talk about these. 
So the first single is Hypnotized, and this is basically like a hit, funky, kind of fabulous kickoff to that. This is kind of like a hit, funky, fabulous kickoff to the album, I'd have to say. Definitely a good concept as far as this album particularly kind of went. This had some good stuff about it, just as far as like the sample and the song and the hook and that sort of stuff. This was the number one single, and it's like a perfect, this was a song that hit number one, and this has like a perfect lyric construction for airwaves, I'd have to say. So this is an example of a song that was lyrical, but also managed to hit number one is what I mean by that. Definitely a song that deserved to hit number one. I this was definitely a song that deserved to hit number one i would have to say just had the right impactful amount of stuff on there just being able to be lyrical but be hooky and catchy at the same time just be crafted for radio but still be a damaging type song that just had the nest i'd have to say so that's a good example of one mo money mo problems is the second single and this has puff daddy and mace on there. and this is a stock this is definitely like a stock and classic east coast kind of hit i'd have to say this is a classic kind of east coast shiny suit single i'd have to say and it's a very durable song this is a very durable song i'd have to say the thing about this particular song is it's very stretchy this is one that lasted throughout the summer of 97 things like that i definitely have to say this is this classic 90s music when you think of like late 90s this is definitely a good pitch when you think of late 90s and rap music this is easily a good pick to kind of have for some of those particular times like biggie completely dominated 1997 despite the fact that he was alive for less than three months in that year but i'd have to say he still did a pretty excellent job i'm curious as to whether or not this would have been a single i just wonder what would this what some of the singles would have been i'm almost yeah I just question what the next one would have been after hypnotized this was the one that was chosen but i'm not sure just because this was released as a single months after biggie kind of died and stuff so i just wonder if he would have chosen this one had that particularly kind of have but that's the thing about it the third single is sky's the limit this is another nice one this is kind of a mellower kind of frosty makeshift malaise of a song i'd have to say it's just a city hopping and catchy upbeat kind of song so this is an example of an upbeat song that just works pretty well i'm glad that biggie was able to do an upbeat type song and be able to pull it off just within that particular pitch just a good example of trying to get one of these and just being able to do it it's just it's a different it's a change of character for biggie as far as that kind of particularly kind of happens it's not quite as mafioso or quite as rugged as far as this particular type stuff as far as this particular type stuff kind of happens so i would have to say it's a pretty impactful single and this does a lot of damage now this didn't hit number one it hit like top 25 top this one hit top 25 top 30 as far as that pitch particularly kind of happened but it is a pretty nice one just a kind of uh, it's kind of an offhand biggie single but i do like the approach of this particular one it gives him some sky's the limit gives him some songwriting ability not to just have like up tempo kind of songs as far as that pitch kind of happens it's just a real impactful one really like the mellow type feel really like the mellow type feel of this particular one it's just a good makeshift kind of song for especially for the winner i'd have to say so going back to cali's the fourth single and this is biggie kind of on some west coast kind of vibes it's not really the fourth single but it's kind of the fusion single with sky's the limit i'd have to say so this is like a stock kind of vacay hit i'd have to say it's biggie trying his west coast hand as far as that pitch kind of happens and it's just a lyrical gem so biggie's basically on fire on this particular album he has a lot of good lyrical barbs on here he has a lot of good lyrical barbs on here it's just a good concept of trying to get some of these particular type moments it's him on the west coast type pitch trying to pull it off doing like george clinton some of that type of stuff i think it's zap or bounce down something like that it just has that particular type pitch it's a real just a real kind of funkadelic type song that works pretty damn well i'd have to say it's a good pitch to kind of have that so it's a nice one uh just real Excellent vacay song, excellent kind of song to smoke up to, just get stoned out in the West Coast and stuff like that. It's kind of a great smoking song, kickback type tune as far as that pitch kind of happens, I'd have to say. So that's a nice one. And then to basically talk about the rest of this album. So not counting the skits, there's 22 songs in this particular album. And out of those 22, I wound up recommending to you 18 and a half. So the only real three songs I don't recommend would just be Miss You. The only three songs I don't recommend would be Miss You, Play a Hater, and Somebody's Gotta Die. Talk about those real quick. Basically, all those ones just didn't really have the correct pitch that I was looking for. I mean, I appreciate Miss miss you just because it's the concept of fallen homies as far as that pitch kind of happens but that one was just a real kind of down tempo type song that this was not unless you're kind of in that mood and mode it's not really an affable song to kind of listen to i'd have to say and then i'd also have to say that play a hate it was just kind of a sing songy type one just kind of a sarcastic type song sometimes i like that song but i just can't see the pitch it too often when i'd listen to it. it's just basically a song for haters out there which biggie would call play a haters him and puff daddy would kind of call them that as far as that pitch kind of happens it's not a bad song it's just kind of it's just kind of this whimsical type one that doesn't always hit as far as that pitch kind of happens and then somebody's got to die was just kind of an intro i just didn't appreciate it as much that one was just kind of like a poor kind of instrumental type one i mean it, it kicked off the album like a certain light it was kind of like a mafioso type beat but it's just not one i would often listen to i'd have to say so that's the concept about that one but to talk about some of these songs on here a real hit song on here would be fuck you tonight which also has r kelly on there on the hook this is like a romantic kind of suave city lights pizzazz of a song i'd have to say it's a wine and dine type song definitely it's just an overall hooky song so this is a nice one kind of for stepping out just in like the city flash as far as that kind of happens it's a real good 
kind of romantic type song just for like date night and things like that just within the pitch and just like kind of this is almost like a wintry song i said this could probably be a pretty nice wintry song just kind of out out on the towns of the city lights just that normal pizzazz of just like outings and like a more graceful and suave kind of sense that i'd say real nice finesse of a hook r kelly and r kelly and biggie do a good job r kelly and biggie did a great job with this particular song so that's a nice one I Love the Doe is a classic song. This is a song I used to listen to a bunch back in the day. I still like this song quite a bit now, but this has Jay-Z on there. This is a classic collab with Jay-Z and Biggie. They had a few songs that they did, at least three of them. This is a nice one. This is like a malaise kind of city commerce bop. I'd have to say it's a reflective song, but it's also for night venues. I'd have to say it's this one is for night venues but it's just a little bit more kind of malaise about it i just kind of feel like the impact on this it just feels a little bit more elated the, the particular thing about i love the dough is it just feels a little bit more belated as far as that concept kind of happens it's just a real kind of just weathered and just a little bit more kind of forlorn not necessarily forlorn in terms of just being in a bad mood but just a little bit more reflective just kind of in the sense of just like wow you know just look at it, just reflective in the sense of just kind of kick back and just kind of just the shock of some the shock of success and things like that as far as that kind of impact kind of has this a good one i mean it's not necessarily like an up-tempo kind of like it's not like it's not really like a hyper and kind of up-tempo type song but it's just kind of a reflective kind of malaise it's good for some four o'clock 5 30 p.m type commerce as far as that kind of has but it also works for like some malaise kind of night venues i'd have to say so that's a nice one i got a story to tell is a pretty good highlight definitely like this one this is another one of the best songs on the album i'd have to say is i got a story to tell is a song of biggie hooking up with an nba player's wife i'd have to say this has a great beat and it's an engaging story i would have to say the lyrics are pure fire on this particular song it's just an overall graceful song so this is just an impactful type one definitely has some good overall feels of it like i was saying one of the album's best songs i definitely have to feel this is a real kind of malaise type feel as far as that pitch kind of happens it's just kind of like this one just kind of it just feels so it's such a breezy kind of song but this has in like such a kind of bittersweet kind of such a breezy type song but this has in such like a breezy kind of bittersweet type malaise about the this works pretty well it's just a real impactful one really like the sample on this particular song i'd have to say it's a real nice one notorious thugs is a real good highlight this is one of the album's best once again this has a menacing kind of frightful beat i'd have to say and it's just got some shrill kind of impactful lyrics so this is biggie outstripping like bone thugs of their particular style now all four of the rappers on here or all the rappers on this particular song do an excellent job with this particular one this is bone thugs they go in on this song also it's just a good pitch to kind of get this particular vibe this is this continues to be one of biggie's best songs i definitely could have stood to have seen this song become a single this would have been a nice one Definitely would have had to say. I also would have said that Fuck You Tonight would have sounded like a single. That definitely could have been one if that had been gussied up to have been more. If that could have been gussied up to be more for like a radio edit, I'd have to say that could have been a great single. Another is a highlighted one. This has Lil' Kim on there. This is a good pair up with Lil' Kim. I'd have to say this is like an electro dance slash rave hopper. I definitely would have to say and this just has some up-tempo drives. So this is a good example of one that's kind of almost on like some Euro pop type sense. I mean, it's not quite Euro pop. It's not, I mean, don't go into the song. Don't go into this song thinking it's Euro pop, but it definitely does have like some 90s bounce towards it as far as that particular kind of happens. It's just kind of an outlandish kind of one for Biggie as far as that pitch kind of happens. It's a real nice electro kind of dance type hopper that just works pretty damn well. I'd have to say it's, it's, a, it's a good electric. It's a good kind of dance bounce with some good jive about it as far as that pitch kind of happens i'd have to say 10 crack commandments are real nice the song 10 crack commandments is a real nice one this is like a haunting real talk song i'd have to say it's got some ice cold lyrics on this particular song it's just got some impactful kind of ambience i'd have to say so this is a real kind of haunting type one this works in it with an extreme pitch as far as that particular kind of happens really like the vibe and the jive of this particular one it's a storytelling song definitely a pretty rugged type song to kind of get this is one on like some mafioso type vibes that this works pretty heavily i'd have to say it's a real hit song that just has a lot of impact this real cold song, I just would have to say, this real nice one, especially towards the end of the song when Biggie really starts tearing it up, I'd have to say, once he gets done with the commandments and he starts rapping a little bit, it's real good after that particular part, I'd have to say, that's real good impact. Nasty Boys, a nice highlight. This one's pretty similar to another. I'd have to say this is like a late night kind of stepping out drive. I'd definitely have to say this is like a sleek kind of gussied up lady song, I'd have to say, and this is just an overall good dance hit. So this one has a good pitch. This was this was sampled by the Biggie duets album, Nasty Girls, that one that had Puff Daddy and Nelly on there and some folks like that, Avery Storm, some of those type folks. This is one that kind of has like that. This was the verse that that song got it from. I'd have to say it's just an overall nice one. It's a real good pitch to kind of get some of that as far as that kind of happens. It's really like the late stepping out. It's really like the glitzy kind of jive of this particular one. It's just a real, ni real nice night flash to kind of get that particular one.
the world is filled is a pretty good highlight this says puff daddy on there again and then the world is filled is a pretty good highlight this says puff daddy and too short on there which is a pretty nice highlight to kind of get this is like a fancier more exquisite outing i'd have to say this song is like a fancier more exquisite outing fair i'd have to say and it's just a casino it's good for casinos and expensive glamour i'd have to say so it's a good pitch to kind of get that particular one just real ritzy the world is filled is just a real ritzy kind of one definitely for some pizzazz as far as i can have if you're near casinos and just more expensive hotels four star five star hotels some stuff like that this is a good kind of pitch to kind of get some of that just have some glamour about you as far as that pitch kind of happens just a real nice ritzy one you're nobody till somebody kills you is one of the best songs in the album i'd have to say this is a very haunting this is a very haunting mafioso highlight i'd have to say it's got an ice cold vibe about it in the execution the song has an ice cold vibe and execution i would definitely have to say in the lyrics this song the song completely shreds this is a good example this one this has a really kind of grim type feel overall about it. this is one of the most grim songs on the particular album this is another clairvoyant type song that just hits pretty damn heavily i'd have to say it's just an out it's a crisply executed type song i have to say biggie really is it has a menacing type feel on this particular one that this is very impactful my downfall is another one that's just like that this is another highlighted one this is like a clairvoyant and hit paranoid vibes that this song particularly kind of has it's just a shrill haunting and engaging type song i definitely would have to say puff daddy has said in the past <clears throat> If you're wondering what Puff Daddy's favorite Biggie song is, I've heard Puff Daddy say in the past that his favorite Biggie song is My Downfall. So that's a good kind of fun fact to kind of know about that particular song, I'd have to say. And then What's Beef is another highlight. This is basically like a classic kind of beef song. It has a mafioso and graceful feels about it, I'd have to say. And Big just kind of weaves through this song pretty damn well, I'd have to suppose. And it's just an original type pitch about this particular song. This is a good example. This is a lot of folks that try to mimic this particular song and just kind of have the same pitch and overall impact that Biggie had on this particular one. Very much a classic song, one of the most popular songs this continues to be a, a song that folks rave about i definitely have to say it's probably one of the highlights off the album in terms of a critic standpoint i'd have to suppose it is a pretty good song i definitely feel and this has like a classic mafioso type beat i would definitely have to suppose that's a good nice one an even more haunting song than what's beef would be niggas bleed this is a real highlighted one this is like a crisp and starkly cold kind of delivery that this song particularly kind of has it's just an excellent kind of grim beat i would have to say and it's a very intoxicating song this one's a very haunting one definitely like some of this mafioso type stuff that this has a more grim pitch as far as i kind of have Happens. like this is not necessarily horrorcore but it is kind of dark i would have to say just an overall kind of darkly impactful kind of affair that there's like a series of songs on here like niggas bleed what's beef my downfall you're nobody till somebody kills you long kiss good night last day some of these particular ones they're just very dark and brooding i'd have to say and they're just very impactful in terms of their engagement just overall grimness that they particularly kind of have so these are just awesome haunting ones that just have a particular edge about them that just hits quite heavily i'd have to say it's a real nice one Long Kiss Goodnight's another highlight. This is Biggie Laying Game Down. I would definitely have to say it's a lyric gem and it's a good example of a lyrics first kind of song. So this is one that kind of when folks talk about lyrics are the most important thing this is an example of a lyrics first song that just nailed it pretty damn well i mean the beat is still pretty good on here but i would have to say i do think the lyrics on this particular song really shine through and it just is an overall engaging listen i'd have to suppose so this is a good highlight of one that just particularly kind of has that pitch biggie is an example of someone that can have lyrics and still just an example in most cases maybe not every single one but in some of these cases i could say he could have like a beat that may be like b minus or b 85 percent something like that or 79 percent something like that and still manage to uh, most to kind of pull off those vibes just because his lyrics just because his lyrics are so compelling so that's a good example of that but then last day is a pretty good highlight this has the locks on there which would be chic luke styles p and j to kiss they were kind of biggies posse in like the mid 90s i'd have to say they were the next ones that were going to blow up this is like a hit posse track there definitely needed to be way more songs like this i definitely enjoy like the biggie and the locks type songs they definitely needed to do way more songs i think biggie probably would have been on the locks album had he lived to it it's just too bad that that didn't happen i'd have to say but this is just a grim kind of mafioso type beats another highlight of this particular album i'd have to say and then the almost song is kicking the door so this particular song on some bad boys 90s rap album skits there were some mad rapper album skits that were on there i know that there was i know there was at least particularly one on the puff daddy album after this particular one but these were pretty funny i'd have to say these were these were some good these were some good pitches to kind of have so i definitely check out all the songs that have the mad rapper on there because they're, they're definitely i would definitely check out all the songs that have the mad rapper on there because they're pretty funny i had to say but this particular song kick in the door is like a dope kind of lyrical damage of a song i'd have to say the delivery is pretty sheer on this particular song but it just kind of has an okay beat so i like this song but it's not one I would oftenly refer back to unless I was smoking or something like that just because I look after the beat. It's just not one of my favorites on this particular album. It's just kind of more of like a, nine, a mid late 90s kind of boom bap type beat that just doesn't hit that quite heavily. This is a DJ Premier beat, which is too bad because DJ Premier normally has a better fare with Biggie. He did the 10 Crack Commandments beat. He did the 10 Crack Commandments beat, which fared a lot better, I'd have to say. But this particular one, Kick in the Door, is just not one of my favorites on this particular album. It's just kind of a poor type one. I mean, it's okay. I feel like 
Biggie definitely annihilated this song in terms of the lyrical delivery on this particular one. It was just not that engaged and listen when it comes to the melodic productions, I'd have to say. So that's kind of the concept. But I, but still, the sound's going to get a 10 out of 10. Me basically liking, me basically recommending, me basically recommending 18 and a half songs out of 22. I'd definitely have to say this is going to get a 10 out of 10. This is a classic double album in that sort of sense. The social score is going to get a 10 out of 10 also because this is packed full of songs. This has some haunting songs, some mafioso and grim type songs that are just pretty, really have some of that grim kind of autumn and winter type feels to really have for some of that type or just for like the colder weather as far as that kind of happens and there's some there's some makeshift songs like sky's the limit and going back to cali and i love the dough and fuck you tonight and some of those type ones there's some graceful type tunes there's some great songs for the ladies like fuck you tonight and nasty boy and some of those type ones the world is filled is a pretty good song for the ladies so there's just some good pitches to kind of have on here it has some of the street appeal and it's rugged appeal that works too there's some good singles on here definitely has some engaging type feels hypnotize more money more problems or example of commercial biggie that still managed to hit and not lose its edge just some good moments overall to kind of have on here it just has a good widespread amount of appeal and just manages to pull it off it just continues to make me question what songs biggie would have chosen for the singles had he lived to see it just would have wondered what would have happened with it especially what songs would have been remixed for like the summer i know biggie would have probably dominated like the summer of 97 or the summer of 98 as far as that particular kind of pitch having this is a continued question mark i'd have to say but this is an excellent kind of bad boys album this did a lot of things right in terms of the future that's kind of difficult because biggie is deceased and has been for 26 27 28 years so i'd have to say that's kind of the concept about it, as far as that pitch kind of particularly kind of has but this is a classic type album i'd have to say i'm gonna to have to review conspiracy the junior mafia album and ready to die his first album there's still a little bit more biggie to review but it's definitely a pretty classic overall album i'd have to say i do highly recommend it and would have to seek it out and just fuck with it because it's definitely packed to the gills